Well, it doesn't look right now like solar is going to slow down anytime soon. Just in the last few years, solar has become the cheapest, fastest growing energy source on the planet. Last year, 2017, solar raised over $160 billion in investment, more than any other energy source, clean or dirty. The problem though, in my opinion, is not what's going to happen in the next year or the next five years. I think solar will continue to grow rapidly. But over the next decade or two decades, see today solar accounts for 2% of the world's electricity supply. And it's going to need to account for about 33% of the world's electricity by mid-century if the world's going to have a shot at averting catastrophic climate change. But between now and then, solar could hit that wall. What'll happen is that even though it's cost effective today to deploy that next solar panel, when there's too much solar on the grid, flooding the electricity grid with electricity right in the middle of the day, the next solar panel will be more inconvenient than useful. It won't be very valuable because you'll have this glut of lunchtime power and not enough dinnertime power. That means the economics of deploying the next solar panel may not make sense. Now, if we're going to continue with today's solar technology and today's relatively rigid energy systems, that's the problem we'll confront in a decade or two decades in jurisdictions around the world. And if we run into that problem and discover that we need to act only then, it'll definitely be too late to take the requisite action. I think that we need to urgently invest in three kinds of innovation for solar to avoid hitting that ceiling and continue growing. The first kind of innovation is financial innovation. And that's to avoid a barrier that it's going to encounter in the relatively near term, the funding barrier. Solar will need trillions of dollars in investment capital to continue growing. And today's investors in solar energy don't have that kind of money. Fortunately, the world's most deep pocketed investors, like institutional investors, pension funds, insurance funds, sovereign wealth funds, they all do have the kinds of capital needed for solar to keep growing. I strongly believe that the industry will figure this one out, that it's going to learn how to package solar projects together so that institutional investors can easily buy and trade them, learning the lessons from other industries that have solved this problem, such as the auto, mortgage, or oil and gas industries. But just as soon as solar gets over this funding speed bump, that much larger obstacle will loom. The obstacle where there's too much solar that it becomes a victim of its own success. It eats itself for lunch, so to speak, where you have too much solar on the grid in the middle of the day and it's so inconvenient you don't know what to do with that electricity. To solve that problem, we're going to need two more types of innovation. First, we'll need technological innovation. Technological innovation in other words, better solar technologies that can be cheaper and more versatile and more efficient, those technologies can make the cost of solar plummet so that even though there's a whole lot more solar on the grid, its cost is so dirt cheap that it's cost effective to deploy the next solar panel or even the next solar coating. You know, I've worked on solar technologies such as perovskites, a technology here at the University of Oxford under Professor Henry Snaith. A technology that could be extraordinarily efficient and printed out of an inkjet printer so that we could have these beautiful coatings in the future that are just ubiquitous. In addition to technological innovation, I think continuing solar's rise will require systemic innovation. That means making our energy system so flexible that we can use solar power no matter when it's produced or how much it fluctuates. Because solar is super inconvenient. It stops producing whenever there's a cloud overhead or when the sun sets in the evening. If our energy systems are flexible, for example, we have energy storage or batteries that are able to store solar electricity and discharge it later in the day when it's needed, or larger grids that aggregate bigger geographical areas so you can connect sun-drenched deserts with energy-hungry cities, or even smarter grids so that customers connected to those grids can turn their electricity demand on or off to account for when there's excess or scarce solar electricity available, well then I believe that we're going to best utilize this intermittent solar resource. But it's going to take all three types of innovation, financial, technological, and systemic, if solar is going to continue its meteoric rise.